Hey there. I thought I would share my process with one of my daily paintings. It's an amazing experience working from a still life or working from life in general. First of all, you're under the restraints sometimes of the object or the scene going away. <laughs> so you have to work fast. And in this particular still life, I really wanted to get some really um, subtle reflected light, really get the nuances of color, um, vibrations and differences, uh, you know, as round objects like these turn, getting color changes opposed to just value changes. And I found myself needing more time than I had planned on. My goal is to do quick daily paintings. This is a uh, 10 by 10 painting that I'm about to, to do. And as I got into it, I realized I needed a lot more time than just a day or even 10 minutes, which I often recommend my students take just 10 minutes to work on a painting. Obviously, uh, 10 minutes is probably not long enough for any painting, but I was hoping in a matter of an hour at least, or two at the most, to get a painting done, which I do. <laughs> but in this case, I found myself needing a lot more time, and I'm probably not going to get to finish this one. But it was an exciting experience. So these are pictures of my still life setup strictly with the lighting that I had. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one I may have lightened a little bit, this one not so much. But this is the original setup, but then I had to move my setup for my class and you can see some things shifted. So ultimately my plan is to get myself a shadow box that I can put my still life in, keep it in place, and I suggest to my students to have a designated area to put their stuff and to put a still life set up. So this was where I started. I go after the large shapes of um, lights and darks, getting initial impressions of starting notes, trying not to mix colors too much for the beginning starting note and trying to use something a little different for each area. So um, actually, you know, these are two different greens. This is a mixture of um, a viridian with uh, manganese um, and I really tried to do, you know, as I look at this, this looks very close to this, um, which they were very close. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get away from it. And I'm, I'm not sure that my start was perfect. I think I would make some changes to it next time around. But this is what this is all about. This is how you learn. So as I progressed, um, I'm not giving you every stage, but as I progressed, I was really going after like reflections. I wanted to really depict the light that was happening from the lamp that I had shining on this setup. And there was some amazing reflected light happening in here. And this can be the danger zone for many, including people who have been painting a long time like me. So I'll show you, actually, I'll just go there now, um, how it really should be a strong contrast there. If you look at the, the setup, this is truly, this doesn't show it quite as much and you can see a little more of the reflected light in there. Um, but when you squint, this is a clear, um, darker valued shadow shape as it shows more in this 
photo. Um, and I really needed to maintain that. And that's something I uh, stress with my students that your starting note has to show your value accurately and show your color choice, your temperature and um, saturation. All of that needs to be determined at this stage. So I had to darken it. I had to go back in and darken it. And when I was learning how to paint this way, I had this amazing experience where I had colored blocks on a table with a white vase. And those colored blocks were reflecting into the shadowed area of the white vase. And looking at it straight on, you see every single reflected color going in there. But when you squint, it all like melds together into one value note. So I realized I needed to make an adjustment here. I also had some made some other adjustments on the shadows of some of my other areas and um, I would love to work on this and really perfect it. I may not do as loose a brush stroke approach, I don't know, um, since I'm trying to get those, I don't know, it's something I'm working out. but. It's a really amazing, fun experience. So here, one of the other things was, um, let me see. I, I mean, I have it in, in both cases, but I really uh, wanted to accentuate. So I've got a violet -y ref kind of reflected light happening in here that that kind of pinky violet color bounces off of that green and I really wanted that to stand out. This photo here I took outside in natural light so it kind of gives a little better depiction of the actual colors but I wanted to just with these just kind of show the um, without changing the light that I was working under show you what I was working with. Um, but there's so much more that I would love to go after in here. These here had this beautiful kind of almost violety muted green against this very bright yellowy green and it was amazing and I wanted to capture that which I didn't really quite get here. But another time maybe I don't know that I'll get to finish this um, if my orange and um, onion last, maybe I can, <laughs> but that's just a little bit of the process that I was going through making this painting.